they call Robbie Cusetta. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Rob, just for the record, can you uh, say your name spelled out last name for us and the relationship to the family? Yeah, my name is Robert Cresetta, C R U C E T A, and I'm Madison's older brother, and Jackie is my mom. Do you have a letter you wrote today? Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. Good morning, Your Honor. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Like I said, my name is Robert Cusetta, and I'm Madison's older brother. June 3rd, 2023 is the day my family and I's life changed forever. The phone call I received from my mother that day is an image I can't get out of my head, and the sound of her voice is something that plays in my head daily. That feeling of helplessness is a feeling I hope to never experience again. As an older brother and son, all I wanted to do was be there. I couldn't drive due to how distraught I was, so my friend drew me, drove me through the night to, to get to them that same day. Watching your mother and your sister fighting for their life is absolutely terrifying, but I don't think that is nearly as terrifying as what Madison had to endure in months leading up to this incident. Being scared of someone she once trusted, being a new driver, and being followed by him in fear of her own safety in the town that she grew up in. This is what my little sister had to deal with due to the defendant's actions. Madison was my first younger sibling and my only little sister. With that being said, I have always had a deep sense of protection over her and I've always loved and cherished being her older brother. If anyone knows Madison, they know that she is light in every room she walks into. She never fails to make everyone laugh and smile. And for me, she was my first and very best friend. Being six years older than Madison, I was so excited to be a big brother and I would, I would sing to her while she would be in her crib. She would hold my finger and I would stay there for as long as she held it because I felt like I couldn't leave. Going from that to holding her hand, looking at her over her hospital bed is a drastic change that I never expected would happen. And I would have stood there forever if that's what she needed. As I'm here today, I'm honored to say that I do not see my sister cry or get scared or let this incident change who she is as a person. I've watched Madison grow, educate, inspire, and even comfort those affected by what happened to her and my mother. She has used what has happened to, reach, to teach others and never complains about it. Madison has made a change not only in her school, but the community and other individuals around the world. Madison is the definition of using a negative and turning it into a positive. I am immensely and forever proud of the progress that she has made. My mom is an amazing mother. My mom is an amazing mother, aunt, sister, and friend. But most importantly, she is one of the greatest people you could ever meet. She goes above and beyond for everyone and makes every child feel like her own, and the love she gives definitely does not go unnoticed. Everyone would be lucky to have her in their life, and I am so lucky and so thankful I get to call her my mother. She is so proud of each and every one of her kids for different things, and, and ne will never pass up an opportunity to tell everyone's success before her own. I hope to be half the parent she is someday and half as strong as Madison, and if I can su succeed in that, then I will feel accomplished. Spencer may have thought that he was taking my sister and my mother's life that day, but instead he only took his own freedom. And as her older brother,
as your older brother, I ask that he is never able to have the freedom to do this to anyone else ever again. The pain from a high school breakup is not even comparable to the pain and trauma that my mother and sister have to endure from this horrific day for the rest of their life. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining me. Great.
they call Kennedy Armstrong. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So happy God. Mr. Armstrong, before you read your statement, um, your name, Kennedy Armstrong, and did you know the uh, Madison Shemis' family prior to June 3rd, 20, 2023? No, I did not. Okay. And could you describe... Um, just so the court's aware, it's displayed on the screen there, but the injury that you succumbed is, is visible, but what happened and what's the long-term damage from that injury? Uh, severe nerve, nerve damage. My older nerve was uh, cut in half. My artery was also severed. <clears throat> Tendons, everything else cut up as well. You have mobility issues with, I think, one of your fingers? Yeah, the pinky is still a little wanky. Okay. I'm working on that still. Okay. And prior to J June 3rd, um, what was your occupation? I've uh, worked at a restaurant and I was also doing some carpentry work as well. So I can no longer do the carpentry. You can no longer do carpentry? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to pursue a different avenue of employment? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. I know you have a, a statement if you want to go ahead and read that. Thank you for your time, Your Honor. Out of respect to the court, Madison, and Ms. Jackie, I'm not going to say everything I feel. Uh, this guy could not handle a breakup and proceeded, or proceeded to plan the murder of Madison. His acts intended to leave a family grieving while he took the cowardly way out. A man who could not handle a breakup decided to take the time to stalk, stab, and try to kill a young woman. Doing so impacted many lives, families, friends, and those in our community. Laying in the trauma one unit at Shands on the night of June 3rd, 2023 left me with many thoughts. First being, are those women alive? Second being, why did this happen? Third, will my hand ever work again? I had my hand essentially cut in half, skin flapping, seeing your own bones, along with your own blood spewing from a severed artery was something most can't imagine. I had to control and monitor every single breath to ensure I wasn't losing any more blood than I already had, all while separating myself to make sure our amazing first responders got to Madison and Miss Jackie first. God bless the first responders. But laying in the trauma unit that night, all I was praying for was the help of Madison and Miss Jackie. After nine hours of being in the main trauma unit, I finally got my own room. I thought that would bring a chance to sleep. However, that, that did not. I kept praying for the woman, whom at the time I did not know, and also refusing to close my eyes because every time I did, I saw the stabbings again, including the cowardly act he did to himself. Ironically, the only reason you're still alive today. I continue to see and feel these thoughts every day. You planned this, you knew what you were doing, and thanks to God, you failed. You failed at your planned murder attempts, you failed at your own suicide, and you remain a failure until God, until you see God, he sends you to the devil. Madison and Miss Jackie's road recovery has been something I wouldn't wish upon anybody, except you. To close things out, you thought you were going to kill people that day, but instead you blew on an amber that sparked a fire inside of Madison, and that fire wouldn't continue. God bless the court, I know the proper sentencing will unfold. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Curtis. All right. 